Good evening, everyone. This is Dolores Cannon with the Metaphysical Hour, and we're live tonight. What is it, the 6th? 4th. The 4th. I've lost so many you days. keep pushing time. <laughs> Since we got back, I've lost a track of time completely, especially after we moved into the new year. I couldn't even tell you what day it was. But this is the 4th, then. And Friday. January the 4th in the year 2013. Maybe another week or so I'll get straightened out of where we are. (laughs) We are feeling like time is shifting anyway. But anyway, we made it. We've got out of 2012 and now we're in 2013 and we are here. Yes, we are. Did you doubt? Oh, I knew I knew it'd be all right, but the other people that kept, you know, talking to us and there was so much fear and doubt and everything out there. And that's the funny thing. Now we've made it to this year and now I'm getting emails and things they think this year something is going to happen. And I said, Oh, for Pete's sake, you know, we are just made it through all of that years and years of dread in two thousand and twelve. What's going to happen? Oh, the end of the world, three days of darkness. We got through it. You would think they would stop it. You would think. (laughs) But now they're pushing it. Oh, 2013, we're going to have all these terrible things in catastrophe. I just drop it, people. Let's just live a life. We don't have to be thinking the world's going to be ending every day. Yeah, imagine what you could do with that energy. The energy that's being used to worry and and create all this drama just go be creative with it and and live life. Yeah. Just imagine what you can create. Uh, uh, yeah. Goodness. I mean, they're living in fear. Look how much fear there was around that date, twenty mm-hmm. uh, December the twenty first, and all of that. And we've had several times during the year, the end of the world. All that fear that's created. That is a tremendous amount of energy focused on one thing, and then it didn't happen. Well, and that fear creates, that fear creates all kinds of turmoil and all kinds of, within your own world, it'll create all kinds of things, let alone what it's going to create for the world when enough people do that. But, you know, look at your own life, what's going on in your own life. If you're having that kind of fear, there's stuff happening right in your own little universe. Yeah, imagine what illnesses that creates, (laughs) too, because that's what we found. All of these stress-related things and, and fear and everything do create physical problems, and that's what I work with. So, I mean, all of that energy generated and nothing happened. Why don't you just sit back and enjoy life? It's not going to be every day around the corner there's going to be something trying to get you and end your world. But uh, that's what it's all about. We're here to enjoy they have told us that many times. Bring joy into your life. Stop and smell the roses. It's a beautiful world. Look around you and really see what's happening. Well, and we're here to create. Yeah. And you know, well, let's create something good. Let's create something you want and enjoy and things like that. Not, you know? Not these end-of-the-world scenarios. I mean, I guess unless that brings you joy. Maybe <laughs> it does. Maybe that's why they do that. You know, it's the same people that love to... to See all the scary movies, maybe, or something. I don't like know. you said, they like the drama. Absolutely. Uh, before we go any further, let me give out the toll free number. It's 1 888 627 6008. 888 And we're open for calls because tonight we're going to be doing. Um, questions from the audience because they've come in through emails and I've gotten so many emails over the years and I have tried to answer some of them on the air but uh, tonight we've got this but if anybody feels free to call in just go ahead and do it because it's going to be open tonight for anything but really that's something you were talking about to even getting emails people saying well, I don't feel any different. It was supposed to be the world was supposed to shift. We were supposed to go into new vibrations, and I don't feel any different. Then we have other ones that say they do feel different. Absolutely. And like we said before, it's something you have to be conscious to. You have to look because it has happened so subtly. It's not something that just 
came upon us and it was going to happen on that day, it's been going on for years and years. It's been gradually. Have you noticed the other shifts? It was just another day of a shift, you know, and so it's been a gradual thing all along. And, you know, some shifts you notice, some you don't. It is so ha- gradual that you just you just adapt to it and don't even realize you're doing it. But you have to look back and go, am I different than I was 10 years ago? And that has to be a resounding yes. I can't imagine anybody who would say, no, everything's the same. You know, because everything's changed so much. Well, some of them might think their lives have changed for the worse instead of for the better. But well, that's I'm not talking about their lives. Their I'm, talking creation. About, I'm talking about them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and absolutely it's their creation. And that's what they have to look at. It's like, what am I, you know, because that's a biggie is learning because it's instant manifestation now. Now it really is. I yes. mean, since the 21st, that's what I've noticed. I mean, you say something and it's instantly happening. So Yep. <laughs> because the vibrations and frequencies have definitely picked up. But that's what people expect it to be suddenly different. But there is. It's. It's there. Mm-hmm. What did you say? You was on the Facebook that you mentioned yes, that. So you on, were... on your on the Facebook page, uh, someone wrote in was saying they just they're not seeing anything. Sorry, don't feel anything. <laughs> it's just, and I told them they need to be they need to pay attention. They need to look back and then see see what's changed. And, I mean, you, you, that's how you have to do it. And you have to just really look around you, and you will see that things have shifted. People have shifted. People do things differently. They think differently. Now, some don't, but for the, but a large part do. <laughs> so it depends said, on what world I guess that person's in. I don't know. Yeah, you said people are answering, and some of them are saying, I don't feel any different, and other ones are saying, yes, I do. No, that was just that one person that said, I don't feel anything, and then that person got responded by others that said, I feel things going on, you know, and I've seen lots of things. So, hmm well, we travel so much, we see it too. Mm-hmm. And we noticed it even in other countries. They said, even mm-hmm. in China, they said they could tell. Why do you keep picking on China? <laughs> because it Why was, is China different from anybody because else? Because <laughs> it was, I was not expecting it. I said, well, I, they're people just like everywhere else. I know, but a lot of people don't think that. But I was surprised <laughs> that they picked up on things being different. Well, well you know. I don't it, understand why they're different than everybody else. I just, I guess you would think you wouldn't be expecting it, uh, but it's a huge country. But uh, if they are, anyway, wherever we go, they are feeling the difference. Okay, uh, well, there was one thing we want to do tonight. We do have all these emails that come in. We get hundreds and hundreds of emails, and I'm sorry, people, I don't have time to answer them individually. And some people do get angry when I can't answer it individually. Besides traveling, when I come back, they're stacked on my desk. But even when I'm here, there are just so many, I can't answer them individually. No. no. And uh, you have a lot that you're doing. So. A lot we're working on, and we even got new projects in the works. Mm-hmm. Nothing is slowing down. Everything is speeding up at a tremendous rate in our world anyway. So uh, a lot of the emails are coming in with these questions, and you can imagine the time it takes to sit down and answer all the questions people ask in all the emails. Mm -hmm. But I found a similarity in a lot of them. It's always the same questions. But some of them write me two or three pages, and uh, it's just impossible. Yeah, and we we do appreciate the mail. That's it. We're not saying don't write. We do appreciate the mail. It's just please... Don't be upset if you don't get a response. Yeah, I do read them. Yeah, you do. And um, But I'm noticing there is a trend going through some of them that is the same. And we can kind of cover some of those tonight. But I do appreciate the mail. People telling me their stories and what's happening to them. And they want to know if I can explain some of these things. And most of the time it's something so simple. And they get blown out of proportion that they think it's something scary and dramatic and something terrible. When it's something very ordinary if you look at it through metaphysical right. uh, viewpoint. Right. We have to remember also that that's the first place most people go to is fear. You know, mm-hmm. if something's changing on them, they fear it. Yeah. So. It's something that is different. 
uh, well, one that just happened, we got one just the other day, and it is a trend. They're wanting to know about going into the New Earth, and they said, you know, what about those left behind? Mm -hmm. That's a big one. We get asked that a lot at our lectures, too, is would they just, con they just think that they died, or would they just suddenly disappear and wouldn't be visible to the other people, or how would we going to happen? Right. And no, you won't die, because they said, mm -hmm. you go over into the new world, you're taking your physical body with you. Of course, after you're over there for a long, long time, we'll turn into beings of light. But when we first go over, we will have our physical body. But they're wanting to know, I guess, but those left behind, will they consider them to okay. have died? Let me let me take this to another little place. Okay. Cause, okay. You're already there. Yeah, we keep okay. telling people Do you that. still have your physical body? Are you still alive? Because you're already there. The shift has already happened. And like That's why we're talking about people exactly. feeling different. You will see it when you believe it. That's why you have to look. You have to study it to see what's happened because it's all come with you so very gradually. That answers many of the other questions, too, where people are asking some of the other questions you've got there. You, it's already done. Things keep shift to keep settling, but that energy, as the energy keeps shifting, then, then some people say, you know what, I don't want to do this, and that's when they check out. But yeah. you are there. Everybody that's around you is there. We are all moving. And so then the part of you, as far as, far as people, do they, how do they perceive you? Well, that's just where people just drop out of your life. Cause you, I thought it was really uh, wise. My daughter said this several years ago when we were discussing discussing me. this. Yeah, and, and at that time we were thinking, okay, yeah, you know, that people kept saying, well, what's going to happen? I mean, where what... People are just going to be gone, like in the Bible, one is left and one is gone. You know, it's like it disappear. And very wise words. She said, "I <clears throat> that just seems like that would be too chaotic for this type of transition." You know, this is a very spiritual. This is very calm. I mean, you have a chaotic transition. You have a chaotic uh, happening or event that creates all of this turmoil, which is not what this is about. And so then that made sense. She said, you know, and then we started noticing, as we said, well, it's more apt that, that she said, well, I would think that people would, like you get divorced or you get people just start moving away from each other. And that is what's happening. That's what happens. People just fade away from your life. And we ask that at the lectures, too. Oh. Have you noticed mm -hmm. people just dropping out of your life? Mm -hmm. And when you think about mm -hmm. it, there are some that you just don't see anymore. Mm -hmm. And you just don't don't notice mm -hmm. it unless you focus on it. And then in the book, I said, yeah, but we could find them. Right. You know, we could, we we know roughly where they are. We could find them. They're not totally lost. Uh, we And if nothing else, we could get the police to find them. Mm -hmm. But they said, yes, but you won't want to. Or you won't, yeah. You'll think about it, mm -hmm. but then it'll you go on to something else, and you won't pursue it. And They're, from their perspective, it's probably the very same. They like they know you're over here, but they don't have any desire to contact you. So their it's lives just, are moving on. Exactly, your vibrations do not mesh anymore, so you move in other directions. Mm -hmm. That's happened all your life. You don't get along with everybody. You move away from them. The energies don't mesh. You move away. In this case, okay, it's a little bit more than that. But why make it a big deal? It's no different than what you've been doing all along. Because the vibrations and frequencies don't match. You meet a lot of people like that that you don't even want yeah, to be around like, them. I'm out of here. <laughs> so. That even to be in their presence, it bothers mm -hmm. you. Right. Well, that means your vibrations are not compatible. Exactly. Maybe they were at one time, but then when it gets like that, you, you just don't want to be around them. Well, you avoid them. That's where you change. <clears throat> right, you avoid them. Yeah, and that's, that's healthy. Because you yeah. are changing. And then uh, Julia said, too, have you noticed people coming back into your life that you haven't seen for a long time? Yeah, that was a, that, to me, that's a more curious phenomenon. It's just, it's, I guess it's just people shifting around. But people that you haven't seen for since childhood all of a sudden just drop right back in. And, and I thought it was just a me thing, but everywhere we go, people are saying, yes, they've noticed that. So 
I'm not sure what that's about, Wes. It's just everybody's shifting around, getting where they want to be. So. And the vibrations and frequencies have been changing. And they said if you can't handle the change of the vibrations, you're just going to check out. Right. And, th and this isn't a big deal, people. This We do this. You, you know, transition. You, do. <laughs> so. you go to the other side and observe it from there. Watch what's happening. Well, if you could explain a little bit, in case some have not heard this before, you know, but they're afraid of dying. Oh my goodness! Well, talked about how how easy it is to die. I mean, we do this all the time. This is nothing to us, and we have to take all the emotions away, you know, to allow it. Well, you know, this may happen if you want to transition, but you know what? Uh, because um, you don't die anyway. No. The body, you know, the physical body, the shell, the suit of clothes you're wearing wears out and dies. But the real you, the real soul, never dies. And it just moves on, goes on to the other side. And you've done this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. It's nothing new. Of course, and now we, in this world we think of, well, this is all there is. And this would be the first time we'd ever left it. But you've done it so much because it's a natural phenomenon. But I'm not telling you to go out there and, and kill yourself because that that's uh, hurrying it up. And suicide is not the answer because you break too many contracts. Well, I wasn't alluding to that either, but I want people to understand. I think when you're you're so afraid of death, it's because you're so attached to this body, which isn't even you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the suit of clothes you're wearing right now that you're going to shed very easily when it's time. It's like well, any clothes. Eventually it's going to wear out. No matter how much you like it, it is going to wear out. Then you'll have to throw it away and get another suit of clothes. And that's all it is. That's what reincarnation is. You shed the old and, and go to the new. But it's not frightening whenever you really look at it. It's not going into the great unknown. It's going home because it is beautiful and wonderful over there. So... uh Okay, so that's one thing, okay? If you if don't you can't take the exactly. vibrations if they're mm -hmm. too hard on the body, mm -hmm. you'll just leave. Exactly, you'll just leave. You want to stay and shift through cuz there's a lot of different ways to to see this to see all this happening. And that's one to watch it from the as other observer. side. Watch it from the other side as an observer, be part of it or I don't know, is there a third option? Um I think those are would be... That may be it. You're there or you're not. <laughs> you're either a part of it or you're going to <laughs> go out and watch. Because if you're here, you have a job to do. If you're here, you chose to be here. Yeah. You were you chose and you were chosen to be here to help this whole thing happen. Period. Mm -hmm. And it's the greatest well, time in history. It's absolutely. never happened before. So let's get excited about it. You know, rather than, oh, my God, what's going on? Exactly what you set out to make go on. You know? <laughs> so, it's just, oh, sometimes I just want to <laughs> grab it. Well, that's what they're doing. I, I was going to say I want to grab people by the neck, by the jugular. That's what they said they're doing. If your life is kind of like you're being shaken, that was because they said people have to wake up. And they're grabbing people by they. I mean the higher selves and the, you know, the, the real us. The ones we work with. Right. They said they have to. They're grabbing people. By the jugulars. <laughs> it's like, wake up. <laughs> so. But you're here to live your life in the best way you can. And once you start doing that and really living it, you know, um, oh, what they would say, you know, bring joy into mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. Stop and smell the roses. Uh, you don't have to work yourself to death. Just have some fun. Enjoy it. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Well, it's your creation. Yeah. It's however you want to create it. If you wanted to create it, and I'm guilty of this one, of just working. <laughs> and there's there's reasons that you do that. But if you want to create that, then that's your creation. But you have to know that that is your creation. Mm -hmm. You can create it any other way at any time. And okay. the universe will support you. Oh, yeah. You'll get whatever it is you put out there. Absolutely. Incidentally, me and Dee Wallace, uh, or we're going to be doing a workshop in February mm -hmm. on creating a reality. Because I've said this many times on this show, and she has too when she's been a guest, that 
what you have in front of you, what you have in your life, you have created, you have put there. Nobody's done anything to you. You create all the circumstances in your life. You don't like it, you can uncreate it and make things better. And we're going to have a workshop in Sacramento, a two-day workshop, about creating your reality and um, how you can make it life the way you want it to do. Mm-hmm. It's so easy. It's so mm-hmm. simple once you mm-hmm. get it figured out. Well, it's all about but it's, it's your thoughts. You have to control your thoughts. You, you have to be conscious of your thoughts. And I was just going to say, it, what I've always said about myself is you can tell my state of mind by looking at my car and my house because that's my my environment. You can tell where I am in my thinking, if I'm up or down or whatever, you know, by how my car or my house looks. Huh. It's kind of the same way. You can tell someone's thoughts by their environment, where their thinking is, what their world looks like. You can tell exactly what they're thinking because hmm. that's what they're creating. If they're thinking drama, they're going to get drama. If they're fear, they're going to get fearful things. If they're, see, it's, it's that way. You just What you think, you get. If you and think you can't have it, you can you because can. it's, mm-hmm. if, what do they say, if you, if you, there was a saying about that. If you think you can or you think you can't. You're both, both right. right. That's right. You're both correct. And that's where you have to learn to control your thoughts in that way. Yeah, you. in the first part is just being conscious of your thoughts. Mm-hmm. So, and then you, and another way, um, and this is something I, I told my daughter many times, not that she ever listened. <laughs> but <laughs> but in the, and I, they have, um, I think it's a term that they use with computers, garbage in, garbage out monitor what goes in because that is what you think about and that's what you create because whatever goes on up in that brain is what you create. So you have to monitor what you allow in. And if you're allowing junk, like if you're watching things, and, and I mean, you just have to look at what you're allowing to go into your head. Uh, drama, media, bad news all the time, all the scare, fear stuff, all these horrible negative things. Guess what? That's going to consume you. You might think, oh, no, no, I'm just trying to stay up on things. It still has an effect. It's in there, stirring mm-hmm. around, and you're messing with it. <laughs> so, mm. But we have learned that for years now with our company, how to create. And it's really very easy once you learn how to do it. We mm-hmm. just, like you said, think it, and then it appears the next day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right now, it's just amazing. I mean, I've been... I remember 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, I used to notice, like, if I said something, it would come back. Uh, it would come back. Or, like, you know, or younger than that, you, would, you wouldn't you notice a, a comeback, you know. It wouldn't come right away. But then in that time period, I used to notice it was, like, within uh, a short period of time, you know, days, weeks, something like that, something would happen and it would be like a whip around, you know, from whatever I did or said. Yeah. Then later I started noticing it was happening within a day. Then, it's, you know, it just kept getting shorter and shorter. And now it's just, it's, pre- it's pretty close to instant. I mean, I'm sure it's not instant because they said we've got a lot of work to do with our minds before we, because again, if you instantly create everything you think about, we could be in some trouble. <laughs> it would be chaos. That's what they said. That's why when you say you think you say something about what you want, if it were to appear instantly, mm-hmm. maybe you wouldn't even want it because we say a lot of things we don't really mean. Right. So that it is better if we have a, a little yeah. delay there so we can see, do you really want this before we manifest it for you? Yeah. But now is the time... The element is there to work with you. You just, you work on the rest of it. It'll happen. But it's beautiful. We say we just sit back and watch the magic. So nobody is trapped in their um, their reality, their their life, because they start figuring out, I did this to myself. I created it. No matter how bad it is, you created it to learn something from. Mm -hmm. Well, mainly then, to learn that you created it. <laughs> now it's time to move on. Once That's you right. figure that out, it's time to get out of it and move on. Mm-hmm. People say, I, I have clients who say that I'm trapped. I can't get out. No, there's always a way out. Right. If you created that, you can create a way out. Mm-hmm. You can create something else. Rather than a way out, like you're running away all the time, just create what you want. 
And then, and you focus on that. And I can't remember who it was or what, what the, there's a theory or a rule or something when that we were in um, Newgrange. Oh, in Ireland? Yes, and the person with us was talking about, some, and they were talking about some theory or some whatever. And it was a scientific study, okay, where it showed that whatever you focused on, because they had different ways that they wanted to do things, and they were like, oh, if I, if I look at this and I'm trying to change this that I don't, you know, I don't want this anymore, and so I'm going to be working on this and change this, and it wasn't happening. But then, but they said, but if you will go and you just focus on what you want, completely lose sight of that that you don't want, completely get it out of your mind and only focus on what you want. In other words, turn your head and just look at what you want. When you stop looking at the other, it actually falls apart. It can no longer be there. It, it ceases to exist. It, it was like it was a, it was a rule. Well, it has to do with focus. Absolutely. Your energy goes to whatever you focus on. Mm -hmm. The same with illnesses. If you focus on it, people say, I am a diabetic, or I Mm -hmm. am this, I am that. Then they're they're saying, name it, claim it. You become that. Mm -hmm. You focus on it. But if you learn to not focus on those Mm -hmm. things, then they they are not your reality. Okay, and so I, I can I can hear somebody saying, "Well, what am I supposed to say then?" What I what you might want to say is, "Okay, I've got a situation that I created that I need to I'm, I'm trying to learn from." Yeah. So what did I learn? Yeah, from exactly. It? Pull yourself away from it. Make yourself objective to it. Don't claim it. It is not you. It's something that's happening to the body because you wanted to learn something. So look at it from that perspective, and you are detaching from it. And then now take the other perspective. Okay. Well, what is it you want? Health, total, you know, health and well-being and, and Money. body and whole, you know, we're talking about if it was an illness or something. Yeah, something, something like that. Then focus on what it is you want and let the other one go and thank, thank it for what it came to teach you and let it go. Well, I was reading something the other day. See, I get tons of manuscripts that uh, that people want us to publish. And I have to read all of them before we decide which one we're going to publish. There was one in there that was talking about nothing exists unless there is an observer. Is that kind of like the tree, if a tree falls in the forest? That was the example they gave, that uh, if a tree falls in the forest, if there's nobody there, whether they won't it, hear it. Will it make a sound? Will yeah, it make a sound if there's mm-hmm. nobody there to hear it, mm-hmm. if a tree falls in the forest? And in this it said... There won't be a tree, there won't be a forest if there's nobody there. Okay. Because that, there had to be mm-hmm. some an observer for mm-hmm. anything to be real. Okay. And this goes along with how sometimes we'll mm-hmm. say in the lectures, if we feel they're into some of these mind-bending things, we'll say that the theory is this whole auditorium didn't exist until you collectively decided to come here tonight. Right. Then it manifested. And then that voice brings up interesting thoughts. Does that mean as soon as we walk out of there, it disappears? But right. that was the idea. It's uh, There is no tree. There is no forest. There's nothing unless you focus on it. Yeah. Every, it has to have an observer to be real. That makes sense. A little weird for some people if they're not into this weird way of thinking. <laughs> that we're, well, I mean, higher I think, metaphysics. You well, know, or some, I think uh, some are calling it spiritual physics now. So, um, but but that is what it is. It's just that other uh, perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, so whatever you focus on, you create. Mm-hmm. If you want to have be healthy, you create. You focus on being healthy. Right. Even if mm-hmm. your conscious mind, Mister Stupid, as I call him, is always mm-hmm. saying, "Well, that's silly. You know you're sick," and all of that. Mm-hmm. The doctors say you're sick, et cetera, et cetera. Now, that's your focus. If you're focusing mm-hmm. on what everybody else is saying or if you're focusing on what you want. Mm-hmm. That's also you giving all your power away when <laughs> you let everybody else tell you what you are. Mm-hmm. So. But that's what, there was a couple of questions here about that one that came in today about that, do you disappear? This was another one. Are we going to disappear from our current Earth? Uh, 
feeding, we will just disappear one day? Are we going to have a hologram of us staying here and continuing as us? No, that's a weird one. That is. Actually, I don't know. I mean, why why does it matter? Why do we have to have all these details? No, really. Does it matter? Let's just go. Let's just proceed one day at a time and just keep going. We know we're shifted. We know it's happened. But is it really important to know all the ins and outs of it? Because you can pick something to death. Oh, yeah, that's it. They mm-hmm. keep thinking, well, mm-hmm. they want to overanalyze mm-hmm. it, and they're afraid if I don't, then I'm not going. Probably, or yeah, I'm missing something, whatever. Just trust. If you're here, you're there. You're, you're, it's done. Just go. keep going with it. I, I know, you, and analyzer probably isn't real trusting, though, so I'll trust what I just said. Well, this one here was a three- or four-page email that came in, and the woman was talking about all of the reading she's done and the horrible, horrible stuff that she's reading and it's on the Internet. It's like, why would you want to go into that, mm-hmm. that we're going into this horrible thing that's happening? The world is going to go into five to 20 Years of rain continually every day, no sun. And she's saying, how would anything grow? How would we be able to live? Now, who would have said anything about stuff like that? I don't know, and I'm sure since you asked that question, I'm sure lots of people will be happy to direct you to it. But, um, uh-huh. you know, we've said so many times, if, that, if you want that to be your world, it's your creation. Mm-hmm. I don't choose that for my world. And I'm not going to have it. It's, no, because you know, I don't. That's what she says in here. It's going to be horrible and terrifying, period. Well, then it will probably be horrible and terrifying for her. For her, yeah. Mm-hmm. But some of the questions she's wanting to know, because she said she just discovered my books about the shifting into the other. She said, is there a scientific way to measure my body's frequency? You know, I have no idea, but it seems like I've heard some people talking about that. So there may be. There may very well I guess she's wanting proof. Am I mm-hmm. changing my frequency? I want some kind of scientific yeah. way to tell right. it. And there again, that's back to that other. But, you know, if you would just look, again, you can tell. I know I'm a different frequency than I was 20 years ago. You just, you just we know. We are. You know, you just, you just know. <laughs> well, you know you're definitely different than you were when you were a teenager, making all the stupid mistakes teenagers do. We change. We can't go back yeah, to that. But they're not talking about that. They're talking about your frequency. Your frequency, mm-hmm. because your frequency was different back then. Well, that was a teenager frequency, but we're talking about the frequency frequency. That's a that's like a mind. That's a that, rather that's an age Growing. frequency. Frequency of your body, the frequency of your world, the frequency. Things are not as dense as they used to be. They're not. They They're definitely. And things not. are not as linear as they used to be. Things are not as. Um, what are some of the other 3D? Um, well, like this this week, we can't even keep track of what day it is. <laughs> right, because time, yeah. Things are not, it's time-oriented. Time is not, it's really hard to um, do, see that. I can't even do it with my hands. Uh, lock time down, you can't do it. Those are the things. Those are 3D things, and they're starting. they're slipping away mm-hmm. because we're moving away from them. And that's what you have to look at. It's things like that, and there's I know there's a lot more. It's whatever is 3D, you look at that, and okay, how is it working now? Because time is different. Well, that's like um, I had somebody the other day, it was something I was reading, all the stuff I have to read. It was talking about time, mm-hmm. and it says one way to show there's a beeper mm-hmm. that it's, there things are happening at the same thing. We talk. We do it on Skype too. We talk to somebody in England. Mm-hmm. It's all happening now. Right. It's not that they're six hours ahead of us. Where it's all happening now. Right. Okay. We got a caller. Hi, Dolores. Hi, Julia. It's Janine from Canada. How are you? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> okay. You got a I'm question? Fantastic. <laughs> I do. I do. Um, you had mentioned uh, that some of your readers were saying. They didn't feel the shift, and I would yeah. just like to um, give to to your readers or to the people listening that not to not to worry, not to fret <laughs> if they didn't feel the shift, because depending on their frequency and where they're at with their spiritual development, they may feel it. 
Some will feel it little. Others will feel it more. It all depends where they're at. Yeah, they're uh, developing. Number one. Yes, exactly. And also, if you're around that time, you had a busy time, you wouldn't have felt it. For instance, for myself, I was really busy during that time, and I have to say I, I didn't feel it. But I'm not despairing <laughs> because uh-huh. I know that for a time there, I wasn't doing my meditation, so I understand that. And I started doing my meditation. I started seeing things shift again. So no, don't despair. It will happen to you. Open up to it. And do, meditation is the way to do it, absolutely, or it's quiet time. Even if you don't meditate, quiet time. With the right. divine, it yeah, will happen, right. but you've yeah. got to be open to it, and you've got to be accepting of what it will give you. And trust me, you will gain more than you will lose, absolutely. So trust in the divine. You can't go wrong. So mm-hmm. that's my uh, two bits. <laughs> uh, thank you for your two bits. It's a very good two bits. Yes, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to say. It's I just all thought I'd put all that over. out there for folks. I don't want people to despair and to understand uh-uh. that, you know, there are reasons. Maybe they're not open. Maybe it wasn't the right time, but it will happen if they keep going on their road to spiritual development. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, and God bless you both. Bless you. And <laughs> happy New Earth. <laughs> okay. Yes, Happy New Earth and Happy New Year. Great things okay. to come, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. But that was what I was saying. This It makes sense. He's talking about everything is now. We uh-huh. put things in a linear perspective. Right. But that's a good example. It, yeah, pull when we're talking together. to somebody on the other side of the world, we don't have to wait six hours for them to, to call to get there and them to answer. We're all hap- It's all happening now, simultaneously. Mm-hmm. So that's a good example of how um, there really is no linear time. Right. And, and a, uh, a comment to, I was thinking of something when, when she was saying her her, her uh, beautiful comment here. Something came in and it was saying that, you know, like we're all in these different phases, but the, what they've told me is soon things will happen that there will be no denying. That's how they worded it. They said soon you will not be able to deny. So... Like like she was saying is is you it depends on where you are you know I'm I feel like I'm at that place it, this things have I mean it's like why can't you see it <laughs> you know because that's where I am because I'm I'm looking at it differently I guess but others are saying I want something more tangible well it's coming it's coming and I like her words don't despair it's coming <laughs> so <laughs> okay well here's another question that I'm getting I'm getting a lot about pets. Mm-hmm. And people are really worried about their pets and the change. Like they're figuring there's going to be this big dramatic change and what's going to happen to their pets. Oh, this one, this was a very weird question that was in here. She said, if I transform to New Earth, what happens to my beloved pets? Should I put them down? And if so, at what point? Mm. That, that's awful. I don't know what, she don't want to leave them in the horrible world that's going to be left behind an awful way to think. Well, there's that fear that it was like, why would you think your animals would stay? I mean, and here we go back. That's what I said earlier. When I said it's already done, and that will answer this question. Yeah. It's already done. Are your animals with you? Yeah. Then guess what? You know, you animals, your children, all everybody that's around you now, that they're the ones that are going with you. We're all going together. Mm-hmm. So who's in your world? That's who's in your world. And they said your house will, somebody have asked me, yeah. will I be in a different house? Right. Should I sell the house I've got because I'm going to have a different house right. in the new world? Right. All kinds of weird yeah. questions. You're, these things come with you. And even though you can't tell it, they are changing their frequencies as well because Earth is changing her frequencies. But because your frequencies are changing, it seems the same. Remember, we're all changing together. So everything seems the same. But if we could get some kind of a meter or some kind of a, and I'm going to bring this up as far as like what you've got in the Nostradamus book, you know, if we were able to somehow go back in time and compare ourselves to 
some other time periods, we would see just how much our frequencies have changed. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the only way we could see it for ourselves. It, but, but you have to look at it and go, you know, this is different. You, you just have to look at it with different eyes. I don't know how to better explain it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. But if they want to picture themselves living in a horrible world mm -hmm. with catastrophes and all these awful things, well, then that's where they'll be. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how that plays itself out as far as, you know, okay, you, you're going to have Earth. Well, maybe it is. Maybe it's something about all of a sudden you have Earth calamities happening right where you are. But otherwise, if it's not that, it's going to be your world. A lot of things in your world are shaking up, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, relationships and your home. Maybe things, your job maybe, it's things that are your world will be having catastrophes mm -hmm. if you keep doing that. So, But I had many questions people wanting to know what was going to happen to their pet. <coughs> the same with the children. Like you said, they'll go with you. Right. Well, and I said before, these animals, what people don't realize, the animals know, know more, much more about all of this than we could ever know. They're much more sensitive. <laughs> they see through all the dimensions they always have. So they know what's going on, and they are here to help guide us. <laughs> so mm -hmm. to think, oh, my goodness, what am I going to – they're helping you. <laughs> you know, so. And the last thing you'd want to do would be put them down, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I understand where that's coming from, but that's but it's also coming from a place of fear in that thinking that, oh, all this horrible stuff's going to happen. No, create a – Create it differently. <laughs> don't yeah. create the horrible world. Because that was what some of them said. I don't want to leave my, if I'm going, I don't leave my pets yeah. behind. The animals are going with you. The animals know what's going on. This one here was another interesting one. It says, um, okay, let me get to the point here. Uh, what would happen, for instance, when a couple has been married for 50 years or so? One has progressed sufficiently, but the other hasn't. Could it be that one will choose to stay here or possibly take the unprogressed mate with them? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, well, remember what we said about, and Sherry Cortland is wonderful with this, on the relationship villains. And, yeah. And then you've talked about, like, when they come in, some people play these roles to help us develop and everything. They may look like they're undeveloped on this level, but then, but if you were to, to elevate and see it from a different perspective, they came in to play a role, and it could have been to get you, maybe you're the undeveloped one here, <laughs> you know, and it's to get you to develop and create and grow, and then, then they've done their job. So you, things are not as they appear. You, that's a judgment statement, and you, can't, you cannot judge on this level whatsoever. But it's the same thing I've been asked. They said, oh, what if my husband, my wife, they're not into this at all, you know, and they're, are they going to stay and I'm going to move on? It's, it's the same thing. Am Wait I going? Wait and see. Let's just see. Because, again, you don't know from this level who's doing said, what. I don't want to leave them. Should I make them change? And we can't make anybody change. No, but what I'm hearing is they are here for you. So, you know, you're the one that's got to get over that and you got to let go of that because that's part of your growth is to figure out how to let things be. Because you're and not here to change anyone. They always told us uh, that's not our job. Mm -hmm. People have to progress at their own rate. And you can't make anyone happy, too. People are mm -hmm. always asking me that. How can I make somebody else happy? But it's the same thing. You can't. But at one of our classes, they asked us, how can we make people believe these things? Yeah. You can't. That's no. not your job. No. No, you do, you can just put it out there and 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 that's it. You know, somebody wants to pick it up, great. If they don't, that's their choice. You know, people are where they are. How would you feel if somebody tried to make you believe something or try to make you do something? Flip it around like that. It's a respect for humankind. You know, we're all here well, together and, and, you know, we're... We Look at how many day. years we've had of the different churches trying to convert everybody. Absolutely. And it uh, it usually aggravates me because mm -hmm. if you want to change, you'll change. And I think that's the same idea. We're not. They've told me many times we're not here to convert mm -hmm. anybody. They're where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. We present the little crumbs, mm -hmm. and if they pick them up, all right. But we're not. We can't make anybody 
change or do anything. And I think you're right that maybe they are doing what their job, what they're supposed to be. Oh, everybody is. So if they go or not, (laughs) that's up to them. Yeah, just let it happen. Just let it be and trust. Oh, that's a strong trust. Like she was saying, trust the universe. Trust it, you Mm -hmm. know. This is all in divine plan. Yeah. Divine order. Just trust it. You know, these have married 50 years or more. One has progressed and the other has not. That's per your evaluation. Yeah, that's your perspective on how if they have uh, progressed or not. Right. They yeah, may that's be more your judgment meter here. You know, let go of that judgment. You know, you don't. Know. You, they may be more progressed than you think they are. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's what you don't know. Hmm. Right. But so this, on the on the question about the animals, please don't put the animals down. No, that's but, a horrible thing to think. They have their life to live here. They have their purpose. Like I said, they. Yeah, they're here. I mean, oh, what? Look at them from another level. They are. Oh, these little guys. Yeah. They're they're here helping you. That's what keeps you compassionate, sympathetic, and they, they bring out all those loving mm-hmm. feelings. You know, can you imagine a world without the animals? That would oh, be a yeah. horrible world. But there was another one here that uh, was talking about animals. Uh, oh, yeah, she says here, uh, if we have all been animals, plants, rocks, etc., before our past lives, before in our past lives, why would anyone choose or make a contract to come to Earth as an animal that's born in a laboratory, just to be tortured to death, a rabbit, etc., with these and uh, monkeys with these uh, tests and things? Mm-hmm. Why would anybody choose that? Yeah. Um, well. Well, look at the reaction it got from you. you yeah, know, it's the same thing. Will my animals go with me or bring yeah, that behind? It's a teaching. It's a teaching thing. They know full well what's going to happen, what mm-hmm. they're stepping into. And, and it is a contract. Right. Um, part of it is, one, they're raising awareness. You know, a lot of what's happening is to raise awareness, raise consciousness for animal rights, things mm-hmm. like that, you know, and, and humanity. Um so you have sometimes you have to have those kind of things happen so that people will take a stand and do something. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, it also is helping. I mean, the tests they do maybe do help people. I mean, so there, there's two sides and everything. And I don't know. I'm not. I'm not on that contract. I don't know all the answers to that. So. But other people we had other questions where they wanted to know, especially the ones that are vegetarians. Mm-hmm. Uh, why would it? animal choose to come into a life where it's going to be slaughtered for food. Well, remember, it's all about experiences. They know mm-hmm. when they're coming in. Mm-hmm. They, You plan your life. You have your contract. You have your plan. The animals do the same thing. And they know when they come in, they're going to experience a life where they'll be killed for food. Right. And they agree to that before they come in. And it's for something for their soul growth. Right. You don't think of that, but the animal does have a soul and it's progressing to eventually become a human. So, sounds a little weird, but that was what we found out, that they are progressing by experiencing that. Right. So, we're not doing anything to them that they haven't agreed to. Right, but in, it takes in the a process, big mind to to wrap around that. Well, I it know. does, and you have to pull emotions away again. Yeah, you have to get very objective, and you just have to get to that level. Um, there's just there's just a lot more to it, and it's not saying oh, don't be compassionate. Yeah, be compassionate. That's part of by that happening again. It's that same thing. By then, what people are shifting, they're like you know they're getting more compassion and not wanting to now kill them. So it's like little by little. It may not be on a grand scale, but you do see. I see more and more people letting go of these have, of the meats and things, you know, all around oh, yeah. all the time. You know, there's still ones that do, but it's a shifting. You know, it's not going to happen all at once. But it means, um, well, you know, it's up to the person. That's what I'll, where I'm asked these questions at lectures about being vegetarian and all that. If it's an individual choice, absolutely, whatever they want in their life. But uh, just remember, the animal knows what's going to happen. 
But yes, be kind to animals. You love the animals. Don't deliberately hurt them. That would create karma. Absolutely. Well, and that's another reason to thank the food. Thank your food. It gave its life for you. You know, mm-hmm. even the plants. You're eating live things there too. Thank the food. Yeah, even vegetarians. Right. That is a alive. Absolutely. They're all they're all live foods. You know, they were live at one time. Thank them. Be grateful for what they are giving for you. Mm-hmm. you know? Well, in my book, The Legend of Star Crash, when the man was just, he was living in the ancient civilization, was like before the coming of the Eskimos in Alaska and Canada, Canada, and he was a hunter. And he said every time he would go out to hunt an animal, he could find them by picking up their vibrations and he knew where they were in the woods. Mm-hmm. And right before he would kill them, he would apologize. Right. And tell him he was sorry, but that the village needed food. Right. Well, I know of that one, um, I think it was the book, um, the Australian, uh, is it Mutant Down Under? Something Down Under. Anyway, the woman where she went and she uh, went with the Aborigines all across Australia and everything. Yeah. Anyway, it seemed like in there there was a story or something I read, and they said they needed food one day, and so they did this, the prayer and everything. And then that day, this big, like a deer or something, which would be weird out there, but it was something along that line. Animal. It presented itself to them. And that's, what, that's how the Indians always did. You know, they did their ceremony, and then the animal would say, okay, here I am. You know, it was giving its life to them. Yeah. They needed it. So. But I'm far ago, I said, don't deliberately hurt someone. I don't think that falls into the category of people who kill the animal for food. I'm talking about be kind to the animals mm-hmm, in your mm-hmm. in your environment anyway. Right. Well, all of them. All but animals, it is it does take a lot to wrap it around. But if um, if you can understand that the animal has a soul and it makes a plan just like the humans do when they come into the life, mm-hmm. and um, they're fully aware of what's going to happen to them. They're more aware than you think they are. Yeah, they're more aware than we are. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. I said that before. Cats can see energy. Mm-hmm. They're right. always looking mm-hmm. at things that we don't see. Well, then I think you were saying that all the animals all see through dimensions. Oh yeah, all the time they see them through many dimensions. So they can do that. They are they they know <laughs> where we're you know we're we're groping in the dark. They know. The it's dolphins especially can see mm-hmm. through many different dimensions. I was told they're really the most intelligent mm-hmm. animal in the world. So, just look at these things in a little different way. Right. We got through some of these questions. Is there anything else that you wanted to... Well, there was a lot of it was the fear and stuff. If you're awake, enlightened, and ready, does this automatically equate with the required vibrational frequency? Let's add open-minded to that list. I well, think they're still being too nitpicky. Again, that's a judgmental statement. Uh, awake, enlightened, and ready by whose standards? Yeah. And open-minded. I mean, open-minded, definitely be open-minded. But again, just you're on your path. You're going at your pace. You're in your place. That's fine. That's where you are. And you just always be working on you. Yeah. That's all you can do. And you're not... It, this isn't a competition. It's You're not... You know, there's that you're not. It's not by any standard that you're racing or anything. You just you're working on you. Another question: Are only the best of us going to the new earth, or does it only depend on a person having the proper frequency? Who's to say the best or the worst? It's Who's a frequency. To say? It's a frequency thing. Mm-hmm. It's the, the earth is changing her frequency. Whoever changes theirs, go with her. Period. It's that simple. Now. What it takes to change your frequency is the higher vibrational thoughts, foods, actions, things like that. So that's just where you work on yourself to keep positive and keep, you know, do those things. But then that's a lot of work. Because we do know the other ones create karma. The other um, thoughts and vibrations Mm -hmm. create karma, and that will hold you back. It's just by your choices that you move one way or the other higher frequency or lower frequency. And it's just you are the one that's in charge here. Like we said at the very beginning, you're creating your world. You're creating your vibration. So it's all up to you. 
mm-hmm. and where you want to be. It's not better or, or worse. It's just where everybody is. Absolutely. You said that in one of the lectures, everybody is at different levels. Mm-hmm. Right. And so there could be point. like there's 7 billion people on the earth. They could be 7 billion different versions of the new earth. Absolutely. Absolutely, because we're all creating our own individual version. Our own individual reality. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks like we're coming to that time again. Time to sign off here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I still had a lot of questions we didn't get to, but I figured this was important. We're getting so many questions about that that I wanted to bring that up. Well, and these are basic questions, so that's good. They're they're. Do we keep getting people. them over and over again? Another reason I can't answer them all. Right. So we thought, well, maybe I can pick them out and answer them on air. Mm-hmm. Better than sitting down and typing. I've got too many other things to do. But we do appreciate the emails and the questions, and we do our best to try to answer as many as we can. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Well, it's time to sign off now. So this now in the year 2013, and we're mm-hmm. here. And, and I want everybody to know, 2013 is the year of manifestation. So how about just start thinking that instead of all this other stuff, you know? This is the year you manifest your reality. Uh-huh. And make it a good reality, a positive reality. You can have anything you want. If you can visualize it, you can have it. Okay. So goodbye till next week. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in tonight and listening. All right, make it great. Manifest it. Good night. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.